All right, the moment is here to test the skills that you've learned in this first unit, which is all about the basics of C++. And we're gonna do that with the Choose Your Own Adventure Lab. Now, a lab is a little bit bigger than a quick code. A quick code is much more, you know, isolated, quicker tasks. And the lab is, can we apply everything that we learned, okay? Now, the one warning I have for you on the Choose Your Own Adventure is it could be very easy to want to do a very, very large text-based choose your own adventure game, but you still have to remember there are a lot of control structures that we do not know yet. We don't know looping at this point. We don't know functions. Uh, you know, we don't know any advanced data structures, things that would make this much easier than it is right now, right? So then why are we doing it? Because it's a good chance to practice the things that you have done. When you only know so much, it's hard to apply them in advanced projects. So this is always a good, fun one for my students. Now, here are your requirements. You're to write a choose your own adventure game. And again, keep it basic. We only have so many tools in our tool belt. And there's three simple requirements. The first requirement is there should be five levels, okay? And what I mean by levels is really five sets of questions, okay? And each time well, let me go, but yeah, so each question should lead the story in a different direction. So when I say there should be five questions, that does not mean that the game should have five total questions and that be it, okay? What that means is when I choose question, you know, when I answer question one, you know, go left or go right. Well, I should be confronted with four more questions after that, but they could be four different questions after, because if I go right, I should, you know, experience a slightly different story, okay? Now that all four don't have to be different after, but it should, you know, I should get a different experience, okay? I should be able to play the game multiple times and get to different endings. So you should have different endings based off of the decisions. And then there should be a scoring system that gives points based off answers. So then when I replay your game, I can beat my score, which I think is crucial, right? Beating your score is, is often something in games that makes us replay the same thing over and over and over again. Can I do it better? Than how I just did it. Okay. Now the point system, don't get too crazy with it. Okay. Uh, you know, but if, if I give a situation where maybe I'm being chased by a bear and I decide to attack the bear or I decide to keep running, you know, one of those should have been a favorable choice maybe and result in a different set of points, whether I'm gaining or losing points. And you should be printing out the points as you go so that we can see what our points are. Okay, now let's let me show you a quick example of when you run a program like this, what it should look like. Now this example should not be, or this example will not be as long as your program should be. Okay, so I'm gonna compile it. I'm gonna, well, <laughs> clear. Give it a compile, I'm gonna give it a run. And you can see that I kind of have an intro here, right? Welcome to my game, choose your adventure wisely. You will start with 100 points. And I'm even including some line breaks here that I put in myself, okay? And the reason why I do this is if you don't add some space and you know 10 lines spit out, it becomes very difficult to see what part are you at, okay? So here's the beginning, right? You wake up, you're in a forest, you hear people running your way. Do you run? or stay. Now these are cues right here to what the user needs to enter. You can see run or stay. All right. So always try to make sure that someone knows what to enter. Okay. And that maybe you're ready for the wrong input. Okay. Because if you put in, you know, an if statement for run and then an else if for stay and they choose the wrong thing, well, then the story can't go on, right? The, you know, the program crashes. Okay. So try and hint at what they should do. So I'm going to choose run. And you can see, you know, again, I'm logically separating things. Good choice. You've gained 50 points. You now have 150. And then another situation. You reach a river. There's a bear on, you know, on the other side. Okay. And what do you do? Fight the bear or climb the tree? Okay. And so, you know, it would be fight or climb in this situation. So it's not as clear here. Okay. So maybe I would want to at the end, you know, put in parentheses, fight slash climb parentheses so that, you know, the user knows. I'm going to choose fight. Oh no, bad choice. The bear attacks you and you barely make it away. You've lost 25 points. You now have 125. Now I've ended mine abruptly. Okay. 
your program needs to be much longer than this. And I say, the game is over, well played, try again, you have finished with 125 points, okay? So here, if I play this again, I should get a different story. So my first one in here, I said, run, what if I choose stay? Bad choice, you've lost 25 points, you now have 75, the game is over again because I've only programmed in a limited amount here, all right? Because um, this is just to give you an idea, all right? Now again, we can get really crazy with this type of stuff, right? But we haven't learned a lot of things yet. Like we haven't learned how to do random numbers to kind of randomize the points or randomize if it was a good or a bad decision. We want to keep it basic. We really are just focusing on the fundamentals, okay? So I hope this kind of helps you see, all right? I should be able to play your game, choose different things, and get different amount of points, okay? There should be good and bad outcomes to your questioning. And I, in your program, should be able to go through five levels, okay? And they, you know, should be a little bit different. I shouldn't be always getting the same second question, which I've seen people do. I've seen people make the first question, they just lose points, and the second question is the same no matter what they chose. Don't do that. The story needs to change. Well, I hope this helps kind of see what the requirements for the first lab are. I'm super excited to see, you know, the programs you guys make.